afternoon. Hey. Thanks for joining us today for the CEO Power Hour. I am really super excited to have our special guest, Scott Aaron, join us today to talk all about LinkedIn. If you are joining us right now live, you have an opportunity to hop on Zoom to be able to join us on the presentation to ask Scott directly any questions that you have about lead gen, about LinkedIn, the difference between LinkedIn versus Facebook and wherever else you are building your online presence. Give me a sec here. I'm just gonna make sure that we are up and rolling like we are. It looks like we are live right now. So just a moment here, I'm gonna bring Scott in so that he can talk to you about how you might be leaving money on the table by not maximizing LinkedIn to your advantage. Now, I'm gonna have Scott talk a little bit more about himself, but what I've really appreciated about Scott when I had the opportunity to first meet him is really how authentic he is. He keeps it real. He tells you really the advantages that you have between LinkedIn versus Facebook, and he's willing to share with you just his own personal experience and journey, as well as some of the results that he has had with his clients. So whether you're joining us here live or on the replay, comment and let me know, are you catching us live or are you here on the replay? Now, before I bring Scott on, I want you to share with us what is the biggest challenge that you are having right now with LinkedIn? I've had an opportunity to talk to a couple of you who are maybe side hustlers or maybe doing this full time. And the number one concern that most people have is really how do I find that balance between showing up on LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram, right? And so hopefully some of that will be what Scott is tackling today. So without further ado, let me bring Scott on so you get an opportunity here to say hello, good morning to Scott. Hi, Scott, how are you? Hey, Elizabeth, grateful to be here and uh, you know excited to share. Awesome. So let me just tell you a little bit about Scott. Now you can grab his bio if you wanna learn more about him, but here's what I love about Scott. Scott's strategic approach is really about teaching others how to create wealth online and with organic traffic. Now, I think Scott and I share the common value that the really biggest differentiation that you can have for your business online is really through the human connection. And here, he is not only an internationally acclaimed and award-winning online marketer, 3X best-selling author, podcaster, and speaker, but Scott is joining us today because he wants to really talk about those four must-have layers that you need to have in your LinkedIn business. So Scott, again, thanks for joining us today. Well, grateful to be here and uh, excited to share. So tell me a little bit about who you are and just tell the audience about what you do and like, how did you get into this space? So uh, my name is Scott Aaron, formerly uh, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, now in Marlton, New Jersey. And uh, I've been an entrepreneur my entire life. I, I started in entrepreneurship when I was a sophomore in college. I was about 19 years old. And uh, I'll be 43 next month. So this has been kind of a, you know, 25 year journey so far. So I always tell people I've been psychologically unemployable since day one. So <laughs> I've, I've never had a boss. I've never worked for anyone. Um, I've grown multiple seven figure businesses in my career. But I, I would say entrepreneurship was something it's been uh, instilled in me by my family. I come from a long line of entrepreneurs. But what I would say is I never planned on being an entrepreneur. Um, you know, there were certain circumstances in my in my life that kind of threw me into this experience. And my father, who is still an entrepreneur, made some um, questionable business decisions when I was a, a freshman in college, and he ended up going to federal prison for two and a half years. And when that happened, um, he had started a new business, our first health club in downtown Philadelphia. And the keys were turned over to me as a teenager, uh, 19 years old, to run the company. And it was the best experience I can get because I had nothing to, to measure it against. And it, it, it's what built the resilience inside of me. So to this day, I know how to overcome any obstacle. And nothing is too difficult that's thrown in my direction because I, I know when you're focused forward, you're going to end up achieving all of your goals. And because I started in the health and wellness industry, I learned to solve people's problems because, you know, when they were joining the gym or hiring me as their trainer or nutritionist, 
they were coming to me with problems, you know, help me lose weight, help me gain muscle, help me prep for the show, help me eat better. So I was always in solution mode for people's problems. When I started growing my online business back in 2013, so about nine years ago, um, I started like everybody else did, you know, Facebook and then Instagram. And I, I realized that I wanted a certain type of caliber of person. I, mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to just use a platform just to use it. And again, we can't control any of the algorithms on social media. It's a big frustration point for many people, including myself. So I was looking for a way to network better with other business professionals because that was my target market. And I jumped onto LinkedIn. I had started a profile years ago, 2009. I signed up for it. And just like most people, it's been collecting dust. And I went on there and I started changing things around. And I realized that this was the missing piece. And then I started really diving into uh, the construct of LinkedIn, how it should be properly used, um, overcoming the fear of um, whether you're still employed by someone else. You know, is it okay for you to, to use the platform? how to really define your target market, how it creates more leads than time, but also how it can lead to more income. And and just to kind of give you a a snapshot, just in the last little over four years, you know, we've generated over $3 million in revenue into our business just using LinkedIn. And and that's just all organic and because it's set up for that. So in the very beginning, people started to hear all of the traction that I was getting and all the results that I was getting. And people asked, can, can you teach me? And I said, sure. And, they, and then they offered to pay me. And I'm like, you're going to pay me to teach you how to use this? So then I realized there was a gap here. So everybody is using Facebook. Everybody is using Instagram. But I found that no one was really leveraging LinkedIn. So all I did was systematize and organize everything that I was doing in a very, very structured way and then started plugging people into what I was doing to get results. And I was able to get a patent on my system. Um, I've coached thousands of people, um, generated uh, millions of dollars for clients. And it's something that, that really inspires me because it's really not about my success. My goal is to really work with people that want to not only create a business that they're proud of, Uh, but a business where they can impact the right kinds of people to really solve the problems of what they're providing. And that's what I do every single day. I love that you said that. And I know, Scott, when you and I first connected, one of the things that I said was, Scott, I exited the world of corporate. I feel like sometimes LinkedIn can be a little too conservative for me. And you're like, no way. The, The landscape for LinkedIn has changed. So what advice do you have for people that maybe are just a little bit more fearful about the the vibe or the culture that's on LinkedIn, especially if they're on their side hustlers? Yeah. I mean, again, fear is something that you project upon yourself. If you're, you're choosing to be fearful of the platform, you're just creating a barrier of entry. So you have to kind of lower that, that, that barrier so you can kind of step into it. Everyone is fearful of anything that's new. And we, we all have uh, uh, a view of how something may be, oh, you know, Facebook is this, so I'm kind of fearful of using it. Oh, Instagram is all about this, so I'm kind of afraid to use it. And yes, at one point, LinkedIn was for recruiters or getting recruited or finding a job. But in 2015, when Microsoft purchased a company, they turned it into a search engine. They turned it into a content creator's paradise. That's what it is. It's where people go to connect, to network, to share business, to do business, to collaborate, to create things. So, and the beautiful thing is outside of, of Facebook and Instagram, LinkedIn, you curate your own personal experience whether that's the network that you're building, whether it's the people that you're choosing to message, whether it's the the type of content that you want to create. So on the other side of fear is, and this is a big thing that I always tell people to do is that, you know, fear is your friend. If if there's a a little, you know, feeling in the pit of your stomach that you're really afraid to step into it, that's a great thing. That means you're on the cusp of something big. That means you're, you're going to unlock a, a, a door of opportunity that you have closed 
for so many years. And, and that's what I, I look to, to help people do and inspire them to do is to open up that door of opportunity to really unlock the power and potential that LinkedIn has for you. So I love that we're going to be talking and I know that we got a lot of great questions already coming in here, but really Scott's going to be really focused on how you can really leverage LinkedIn to really change your life, business and income. And I love Scott, what you just said about how LinkedIn is such an advantage to some of the other social media platforms out there, because everyone on LinkedIn is all about business, whether it's corporate, whether it's entrepreneurship, whether it's consulting, coaching, that when people are engaged on LinkedIn, the expectation is let's talk about business, right? So there's a little bit of that focus of really, I think where other platforms, you don't necessarily have that. So Scott, before I kick it off to you, based on your experience, right? Because a big part of what I talk to my audience about every week, every day is really about saying yes to themselves. What are some of the results that you've seen from clients that you've worked with that have said yes to themselves and really given themselves permission to show up powerfully on LinkedIn? Well, I always talk about the revenue cycle, which is one of the most important cycles in your business. And you know, to create revenue, it requires one thing and one thing only, and that's generating leads. Yeah. If, if you don't have leads, then you can't create a conversation with that potential lead, which does not lead to a conversion into your business, which again, spits out on the other side, revenue. So my main focus is teaching people how to leverage LinkedIn to take advantage of that revenue cycle which starts with lead generation. LinkedIn through and through is the best place to generate organic leads on all of social media. Um, if your calendar is not full of, of potential client acquisitions, then that's the scariest place to be. So with clients that, that follow my lead, whether it's consulting with me or following my, my done for you course, they fill up their calendar with not just the, the quantity of calls that they want, but the pre-qualified calls that they want, a very hyper-targeted person that is really prepped and ready for what you have to offer, which will create that sale into your business. And as I mentioned, um, I've helped people create extra hundreds of thousands of dollars of business into their, um, into their company. I've helped uh, numerous people create millions of dollars. One of my buddies that I worked with, he owns um, a, a brick and mortar um, construction firm in Detroit, and he was looking to leverage LinkedIn from a very hyper-targeted standpoint. He has a bricklaying company, and he was looking to bid on more jobs in the Detroit area. And he said, you know, I need to use LinkedIn to connect with business developers, with real estate developers in the Detroit area. And, and I taught him what I needed to do, what he needed to do. And not only did he generate $1.5 million in about 14 months just off of LinkedIn into his business, he actually closed the single highest contract, which was $600,000. Wow. So when I mean it's a game changer, it, it, it changes people's businesses and lives if they follow it. And it's a simple recipe that I created. So mm -hmm. I always tell people, if you leave out one ingredient, it's, it's not going to come out the right way. So as long as you follow the ingredients and follow my lead, and, and this is what I love to teach. I'm not just a, a LinkedIn coach or LinkedIn trainer. People have coined me that. I'm teaching people what I do every single day still to this day to get the results into our business. And all people are doing is just coming down the path that I've carved out for other people to follow. Yeah, I love that. Hyper-targeting is what you get on LinkedIn. So with that, Scott, I'm going to pass you the torch. So why don't you go ahead and kick us off? And folks, as you are tuning in, drop your questions into the chat. If you are watching us here in the Facebook group, I encourage you to join us here in Zoom so that you can actually ask Scott some live Q&A questions as well. And with that, with that, I think you're all set to go, Scott. Awesome. So, you know, the big question that I get from people is, you know, why LinkedIn for your business? And there's six specific things, seven uh, that I typically go over. And, and one is your connections. And, you know, the one thing that I know is that you need the law of numbers in your favor. And on Facebook, um, which, you know, there's been a lot of articles written, I know at least four or five of my close business friends 
that originally grew their businesses on Facebook said goodbye. And they're actually leaving Facebook to go to other opportunities, whether that's Mighty Networks or leveraging LinkedIn full-time because it the landscape has changed. But for me, I, I want to go somewhere where the, the opportunity is greatest for me. And you're only allowed 5,000 quote-unquote friends because we know that no one has the capacity for 5,000 friendships. That's just not how we work. It's a lot of acquaintances and people that we know. But don't forget, Facebook only shows 0.5 to 1% of your network what you're actually doing on your personal page. It, it's literally a desert. And on LinkedIn, you're allowed 30,000 organic connections and you're in control of that. You actually are deciding who you're connecting with and who you're receiving and accepting a connection from. But if you want to talk about income opportunities, so the average income that someone makes on Facebook and Instagram is $30,000 a year or less. And the average income that someone makes on LinkedIn is $100,000 a year or more. So I'm not going to waste my time trying to convince someone that does want to work with me that can't afford it. I'm going to meet them where they are. I'm going to go to a platform where I know the monetary value is there of not only what I'm providing, but the value that that person sees in themselves to make that investment, but also demographic. If you take the median, uh, median uh, demographic of Facebook and Instagram, it's 18 to 29 years old. That's not my demographic. My demographic is more than 30 to 55 range, which is LinkedIn, but also lead generation. So Forbes actually reported this about a year and a half ago, and they actually brought a third party in that did a study over six months of organic lead generation, organic Facebook versus organic LinkedIn unpaid. At the end of that six months, they found out that LinkedIn was 277% more effective for organic leads than Facebook. And that's the biggest thing. Remember, I talked about the revenue cycle. The first part of that revenue cycle is generating leads. So if you're not happy with the amount of leads that you're generating, it's not that you're doing anything wrong, you just be, be, may be spending time on the wrong platform. But also location. You know, my wife and I have the um, very, very grateful opportunity to actually have clients in eight countries around the world because of LinkedIn. You know, we can target and we can search and we can connect with people um, everywhere else. And that's what I love about LinkedIn because, you know, our demographic, our avatar, they're everywhere. We have clients in Canada, we have clients in the States, we have clients in the UK, we have clients uh, in Hong Kong, we have clients in New Zealand, in Australia, everywhere, but also the user base. Now, LinkedIn has 700 million users on the platform compared to Facebook and Instagram where there's 8 billion. Now, someone might say, well, Scott, you know, if there's 8 billion why wouldn't I want to use the larger platform? Well, my simple response is you're going to get drowned out. You want to be on the more intimate platform where visibility is going to be higher. So the smaller amount of users, the greater opportunity that you have to be seen. But networking. So Facebook is the barbecue of social media. That's where people go to hang out. They share their life, you know, engagements anniversaries, marriages, life stuff, right? Instagram is the Bravo TV of social media. It's the real housewives of social media. Everyone's living this epic life. Everything is filtered. No one wants to show a picture of them with a crease or a wrinkle in their face. They just want to show what perfection looks like. And life is not about perfection. Life is about living authentically. And success really happens behind closed doors. It's not what you see on social media. And what I love about LinkedIn is that it's a global networking event every single time you log on. It's there for people to connect, to network, and to generate business. So there's a couple of key statistics that I love sharing with people. And obviously, these are from um, just about two years ago. So you look at the millennials, which is the top right stat. Among 2 billion millennials, 87 million are now on LinkedIn. So even that millennial age group is seeing a big shift in what was benefiting them on Facebook and Instagram and what is not anymore. And that's why they're now moving over to LinkedIn. But if you look at the also the top right statistic, 
93% of all B2B marketers consider LinkedIn to be the most effective site for lead generation. So you may be thinking to yourself, well, Scott, I'm not B2B, you know, I'm B2C or I'm not either of those. Listen, if you're in the business of connecting with other people, it's all H to H. It's human to human connecting. So if your end goal is to connect with another human being to offer your product, your service, your opportunity, you're going to need to be on LinkedIn. But if there's any stat that really holds the truth of what LinkedIn can do, it's the middle statistic. 80% of all social media B2B leads are generated on LinkedIn. Facebook is three. Instagram is not even on here. Eight, eight out of every 10, I, I want everyone to digest that. Eight out of every 10 B2B leads are generated on LinkedIn. And you have to ask yourself, am I taking advantage of this platform or am I pushing it to the side? Now, the first layer is your profile and part of the, the resource packet. If anybody emails me, scott at scottaaron.net, you'll get this resource packet. I show you the first step in really experiencing everything that you can through LinkedIn. Now, the fact is, is that there's SEO built out on our profiles. It's a search engine. So your face, uh, LinkedIn profile is just like the homepage to a website. It's not about sharing what you do. It's sharing who you serve, how you serve them, how you work with people, and what they could achieve from what you do. So it's always, I always tell people, you have to think about the person that is on the other side of the computer screen. And you have to also think about the specific keywords that you need to use in your profile that is going to allow you to appear in more searches to gain more visibility. Now, in the infograph, obviously, that I'm about to show you, I go over a lot of those keywords, and there's a lot of nuances. You don't want power statements. You don't want emojis anywhere on your profile. It's got to be very clear because, again, when people put emojis on their profile, what I didn't know this, and I found out the hard way, is that it actually lessens your searchability because the search engine picks up the emoji instead of the keywords. Now, the other thing that you want to do is you need to fill out every single section. So your headline, your about me, your experience, licenses and certifications, um, volunteer experience, but also gathering recommendations. This is where your social proof is. This is where your business experience is. So if anyone goes to my, my LinkedIn profile and you go down to my personal recommendation area, I have nearly 500 written recommendations that I've gathered over the years of people that say, yes, this guy knows what he's doing. So I don't have to convince people to work with me. If someone wants to create an established brand and business using LinkedIn, they want to generate consistent leads and income on LinkedIn, then I'm going to show them how to do that. And you let the social proof and words of other people to do so. So let's look at the infograph that you all get. If you obviously, if you email me, obviously that this is part of it. Now, you want to start with some sort of power adjective. And these are all examples, and you're going to kind of plug yourself into it. So it could be CEO, president, founder, owner, operator, head lady boss, whatever you feel really describes you and your business. That is what you want to start with. And then you want to use specific keywords. So it could be business coach. And on mine, um, you know, the power adjectives, you know, obviously, you know, it could be president, founder, owner, operator, but on mine, it has, you know, linked leads generation, lead generation, marketing, branding, business coach, podcaster, best-selling author. So all things that I want to come up in searches. So if someone is searching for lead gen, I want to make sure that I'm popping up. If someone is looking for marketing and branding, I want to pop up. If someone is searching for podcast host, I want to make sure that I pop up in that search. Now, in the experience section, you also want to make sure that you list at least three experiences. Now, and you can go as far back as you want. Um, I, I kind of, I didn't go all the way back. I, I started in business in 1998, but I started um, using LinkedIn when I opened my uh, my my third and final gym, which is in 2004. So I don't really go past that 
um, because there's so many things that I did. So I, I list a bunch of things. And obviously, the top thing that you have listed is what you're currently doing right now. So you want to make sure that you have at least three experiences listed, whether you know, you're working for someone right now, whether you have a side business that you're, you're growing, and you want to add a three to five sentence description for each of those. You don't want to list it like a resume. Three to five sentences, that's all people are going to read. If you have multiple paragraph descriptions for your experiences, it's going to fall on deaf ears. You really want to have something, three to five sentences, one paragraph that really explains what it is that you did or still do with that current experience. Now, the summary section is where you can go into greater depths of your story, your journey, your passions, you know, your specialization or your niche. Now, there are three keys that you need to know about the summary section. Number one, it should be three to 500 words in length. So three to 500 words in length is optimal to really share your summary the right way. The second thing is you need to make sure that it's in first person. I, not third person like Kramer from Seinfeld. So you need to have it in first person. You want to tell your story, not someone else. And third and final, you need a clear and direct call to action. Email me at this email address. You want to take people on a journey. You want people to know that after reading about you, they have a way to connect with you. And getting people to take action and email you is a great way. So for those that are on here live, if that makes sense so far, drop a Y or a yes in the chat box. Now, the other thing is joining groups. So groups are a great way to find other individuals from a personal and professional standpoint that you have relatability with. So you want to join groups, and you don't have to join a ton, three to five max, that are a reflection of you and who you are. So you can start interacting with people that share commonalities. It could be on a personal standpoint. It could be hobbies. It could be business things. So I'm in podcasting groups. I'm in networking groups. I'm in LinkedIn coaching groups. I'm in branding and marketing groups. So you want to join things that you are passionate about. And just like searching for a person, you can search for a group. You can search for business coach group. And guess what's going to show? It's going to show you those business coaching groups that you can join. So again, you don't have to go crazy and join a ton. You can just join three or five and you interact once a week. And if you're going to interact in those groups once a week, just make sure you provide something of value to that group. Maybe um, a PDF that has a couple tips for them or a takeaway or a share. You want to build that know, like, and trust. Now. Um, just type into the chat box, uh, who is your ideal avatar? So if you, my wife says this all the time, if you could close your eyes and imagine your ideal client from a industry or professional standpoint, not man, woman, age, any of that, what, what professional background or industry is your ideal client a part of? So as you're thinking about that, type it into the chat box. I'm going to walk you through a very simple exercise of how you can start leveraging CEOs. Awesome. So CEOs would be the avatar. So really start thinking about, again, how am I going to use this search engine, which is LinkedIn, to my fullest capability that's going to allow me to connect with the right people? Now, here's the thing. There are two types of connections that you want to have on LinkedIn. And if they do not fit into those two buckets. Now, um, I'm, I'm going to challenge um, what a solopreneur is. So get a little bit more granular, right? So think about industry or profession. Is it a small business owner? Is it a business coach? Is it a lawyer? You know, think about very, you know, from a foundational standpoint. So if you're going to type something into the chat, if you're going to type something into the search engine, if I type in solopreneur, is that going to give me a search result? 
Am I going to have a better opportunity of typing, you know, uh, business owner or small business owner? Is that going to provide me a better result? Coaches, that's a great keyword to search for. Now, you have to think about two types of connections, ideal client and power partner. So let me give you an example. So if I had a business where I was teaching other health coaches how to grow a business online, my ideal client bucket would be full of other health coaches. I would be searching for health coaches, right? Now, the other type of connection you need to have is something called a power partner. That's where introductions and collaborations happen. So if a health coach or personal trainer was my ideal client, my power partner would be a gym owner because gym owners typically employ health coaches, nutritionists, group fitness instructors, personal trainers. So now I can network with that person and ask for referrals. So you have to think about if the people that I'm connecting with or are sending connections to me do not fit into one of those two buckets, I'm not sending them a connection request and I'm not accepting them as a connection as well. So if that makes sense, drop a Y or a yes in the chat box. You want to connect with those who best benefit from what you offer. You have to create those similar pain points. That's where trust and rapport can be formed. If you know that person that you want to work with, you know what they're struggling with. You can easily have that organic conversation because you have what they want. So it's not about telling people what they need. It's giving people what they want. There's a big difference between need and want. And those that create the most organic connections will create the most impact and income using LinkedIn. Now, I want you to think about this statement for a second. So in the chat box, what is something that you know that salmon do that most fish do not do? What is something that a salmon does that most fish don't do? If you know the answer, type it in the chat box. I know we're doing a little bit of biology right now, but it's gonna make sense. Yes, they swim upstream. Now, I want you to think about this conceptually, and they do taste yummy, that is correct. I want you to think about this from a business standpoint. So think about everyone in your industry and profession, what they're doing. What are, what are they doing to generate leads? What are they doing as far as getting visibility in their business? Chances are they're doing the same thing. They're posting on Facebook. They're posting on Instagram, right? And they're fishing in this blood red sea instead of a crystal clear ocean. So just think about for a second, all of you making, whether you're live or on the replay, making the decision today to turn around and become a salmon in a world of fish and leave the rest behind. Let them do what they want to do. And you start carving your own path. You start blazing your own trail. You become that person within your field and profession that is the first one to walk on that beach, leaving footprints of success for other people to walk alongside. That's what LinkedIn can do for each and every one of you. You just have to know how to use it. That LinkedIn's where you can have your own voice. You start to attract people with the message that you have, not only from your profile, but the content that you create and the way that you message people. This is how you find your tribe. As you are listening to this and watching this, LinkedIn has the highest organic reach, has the highest organic visibility, and has the highest organic engagement on all social media right now. People just aren't leveraging it the right way. And again, once you get under the kimono, so to speak, of what LinkedIn is and how it works, you're never going to turn around. You're never going to go back ever again. It's really that powerful of a platform. Now, let's talk about messaging. Because here's, here's the, what I've experienced. 
most people, and, and this, this goes for a lot of social media platforms, I think all of us have been exposed to someone's 18 paragraph long drunkalogue verbal vomit trying to pitch and sell, click this link and join here and watch this video and book a call and they're just verbal vomiting all over you. And 10 out of 10 times, we don't even give it a second look. We're like, I am not talking to that person. So you learn from what others do incorrectly in order for you to do what you need to do the right way. So I have something called the magic formula. And it's, it's a three-step process of messaging a new connection. So you, now you're planting your seeds, you're connecting with people, and now they accept your connection. You're like, okay, what do I do now? How do I reach out to them? Well, you do this simple thing. The first thing you do is you state the person's name in a relaxed fashion, not a stuffy business fashion. You're not going to say, dear Elizabeth, comma, space, indent, next paragraph. It's stuffy. It's too businessy. And also, it mimics a lot of the automations that people have set up on LinkedIn. So you're not allowed to use any automated processes on LinkedIn. You can get your account terminated. So a lot of marketing companies tell you, oh, yeah, we can connect and message for you. We can set this automation. Soon as LinkedIn sees that you have that being done, you're gone. And a lot of that messaging, even if you're typing, dear so-and-so, comma, space, indent, it looks like those automated messages that people are getting. So it actually retracts them from actually wanting to respond. But if you simply said, you know, hey, Elizabeth, so great to be connected to you. It's relaxed, it's welcoming, it's inviting, and it's warm. The second thing you do is you tell them why you're reaching out without mentioning a sales pitch or an opportunity or a link or a video. I call it bridging the gap or lowering the drawbridge. You want to invite that person across. So again, if you're doing your due diligence, you're connecting with the right people, you're looking to message the people that could benefit from what you have to offer without selling or pitching. You're going to have that organic connection. So, you know, business coaches are, are one of my niche markets that I connect with. So if I saw that Elizabeth was a business coach, you know, I could reach out. She accept my, my connection. Hey, Elizabeth, so great to be connected to you. I noticed that you were also a business coach, as am I. Would love to hear how things are going, share more about what I'm up to, and how we can support one another here on LinkedIn. Now, I've done two things there. Well, number one, I've stated the purpose and the connecting point between myself and Elizabeth. We're both business coaches. So from her perspective, as she's reading that, she's going to be like, oh, that makes sense. Scott's a business coach. I'm a business coach. That's why he's reaching out to me. But the second thing I did is I used the second most important word of the English language, uh, aside from someone's first name, which is the word support. Now, when someone reads the word support and says it in their head, it actually, scientifically, this has been proven, it triggers their brain to release a chemical called oxytocin. This is our feel-good brain chemical. Just like dopamine, endorphins, serotonin, cortisol, so now this person is feeling good as they're reading this message. And the third thing you're going to do is just finish with a specific call to action. Do you have any time this week or next week for a call or a Zoom? Now, statements lead to nowhere. Questions lead to answers. You have to finish with a CTA, a call to action. You have to ASK to GET. You have to ask in order to get. So as long as you're mentioning that person's name in a relaxed fashion, you're creating that connecting point, and you're finishing with that, that call to action, you will start to generate more conversations. If that makes sense, drop a Y or a yes in the chat box. Now, the next layer is making sure 
that you're using the push notification messages. And this is what I love about LinkedIn. So I always tell people that no connection is ever dead on LinkedIn. So when you become connected to someone, some people will respond to your initial message. Some people won't. And I'm fine with both. But let me share an example. So every day, LinkedIn will notify you, these people have a birthday, these people have a work anniversary, you know, these people uh, changed the job. And this was last January. And I, I wished um, 24 people, um, happy birthday, happy anniversary, blah, blah, blah. And of the 24, um, I got a response from 12 of them. And of the 12, I came back over the top and said, you know, so great to hear things are going well. I know it's been a while since we connected, you know, would love to check in and see how things are going anytime for a call this or next week. And of the 12 that I then reached back around and responded back with the magic formula, I ended up creating $30,000 in revenue into my business. I ended up picking up four new clients just from using the automated messages that LinkedIn gives me. It's another layer of lead gen. So the new connections that you have are your are leads, but also every single one of your connections is a lead. And LinkedIn notifies you, stay in touch with them. Send them a happy birthday message. Congratulate them on their promotion. So no connection is ever dead. That method alone creates more leads than time. So what I want you to type in the chat box right now is just a simple affirmation, if you want to. What I want you to type in there is fear is my friend. So if you can affirm that, don't affirm it to me, don't affirm it to Elizabeth, just type fear is my friend. And there's a, a purpose and a reason for this. On the other side of fear is everything we want in our business and our life. A anything that we do for the first time, we're scared. We're a little bit fearful. But once we actually step into that fear, we realize it's not that bad. On the other side of fear is abundance and prosperity and ease and peace and all those things that we want in our business. You just have to be willing to lean into it. And, you know, Robin Sharma, one of my favorite authors and speakers, I, I saw him speak and he used this great analogy. He said, if you were an Olympic downhill skier and you let fear get the best of you and you lean back in your boots, what's going to happen? And he said, you're going to fall on your ass. You have to lean into it. You want to talk to new people. You can't wait for the skies to open up and drop people into your lap. You don't want to just post and pray and hope people reach out to you. Whatever is uncomfortable right now, you just got to get it done once and it becomes comfortable. Right? No one goes to the gym once, works out, leaves the gym and looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger on the way out. It doesn't work that way. It's the compounded effect. Most people are posting on social media and waiting for others to reach out. It is your job and your due diligence to reach out to new people each and every day. And you need to be on a platform that supports that. You need to be on a platform that you're not going to get blocked for sending too many messages. You're not going to get in, in trouble for connecting with the wrong people, you can build a steady network each and every day. You know, I've grown my network organically in the last five years from 400 connections to just under 28,000. Imagine what your business would look like if you grew your network the way that I have. Now, the last layer is content. Content is everything. And when you are producing content, it has to do one of two things. It has to educate and it has to inform. 
You want to build that know, like, and trust with your audience. At the end of the day, no one ever buys anything from anyone that they don't know, like, or trust. And creating the right kind of content will enable you to do so. And you want to make sure that you produce your content from something that I call the PSP, not the DSP. The PSP is the passenger side perspective, that ideal client and customer, not the DSP. That's our egoic side, right? That's when we start posting about what we think people need and not talk about what people want. There's a big difference. Before you go and post something on social media, really read your post and say, am I doing this out of a self-serving way for myself because I know this is what people need? Or are you thinking about the person that's on the other side of the computer screen about what they want, about what's really going to bring them closer to you? And all you have to do on LinkedIn is post three times a week. That's it. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And that's all you need to commit to. It's not like Facebook where you got to post four or five times a day or like Instagram where it's four or five times an hour. It's three times a week, once on Monday, once on Wednesday, once on Friday. So here's what you're going to do. Monday, you do a video. The number one way to build organic connection with someone is where they can see you, feel you, and hear you. And that's on video. And you don't need any fancy equipment. I do LinkedIn Live now, but before I was doing native video, which I always suggest people to start out two to four minutes in length. You just need your phone. That's it. Prop your phone up, hit record, and just solve some problems for two to four minutes. Three tips on how to do this. Four ways to do that. Here's my tip of the day. Solve people's problems. Write a little description before you post it. Throw it up on LinkedIn. It's a great way to start your week with a nice little video to build that know, like, and trust on LinkedIn. Wednesday, do your market research. Create a poll. So when you're on LinkedIn and you go to create a post, they give you an option of what kind of post you want to create. And there's a little bar graph that's a poll question. If you want to find out what your audience is struggling with, what they need help with, what the holes and gaps are in their business, simply ask. Prime example, I did a, a, a poll question the other day, and I said, are you more likely to respond to a connection request with someone that adds a note or not? Yes or no? And I got a bunch of feedback, about 80 or 90 people voted. And that gave me the market research required to then talk about it in a video and solve people's problems, give them some advice of what they should do if they're going to add a note to a connection request. So Wednesday is your market research day. Friday, a long form piece of content. So uh, LinkedIn has up their limit from 1,300 characters to 3,000 characters. So you can write a really nice chunk of a post. Have some sort of um, personal branded image of yourself, right? So a professional photo um, for the ladies, typically neck up, just so you, there's no creepers out there. Um, you know, your face, something very professional. And then, you know, a simple title of what the content is about. And again, solve some problems, give some tips, some tangible takeaways, give people a way to learn from you for free. So you add value and enrich their life without asking for anything back in return. And you all know the adage, you have to give in order to get. So pour value into other people and they will start pouring back into you. So Monday, do a video, Wednesday, do your market research poll, Friday, do your long form post solving people's problems. So if that makes sense, drop a Y or a yes in the chat box. Just want to make sure everybody is clear. Now, this is where you brand yourself. You want to be the authoritative figure you are meant to be. 
you, I promise you, if this is done the right way, you will have people reaching out to you every single week to find out how they can work with you. It happens to me and it can happen for you. Now, just like with anything in business, consistency leads to massive business growth. So people ask me all the time, how long does it take to work or, you know, blah, blah, blah. Listen, this is the long game. This is the tortoise and the hare effect. It's not about how you start. It's about how you finish. The only way that LinkedIn will not work for you is if you abandon it, if you stop using it. LinkedIn, when used properly, you'll have massive results for life. Our results in our business is growing every single year. This one platform solves whatever business issue you have, it's going to solve for it because it's a business networking platform. It's the cure-all for not having people to talk to, which is the number one problem business owners have. I need more people to talk to. I need more organic leads. I need more conversations. I want to create more sales. That's on LinkedIn. But here's the simple truth. Entrepreneurship and business ownership, no matter what your business is, is all about rapport building. It's all about relationship building and it's all about trust building. And the one thing that I want people to always remember is that there's one aspect of business ownership and entrepreneurship where there is no click funnel for it. There's no email sequence. There's no opt-in and that's human connection. Your ability to create organic and true, authentic human connection is the number one business building tool and it's sitting in your back pocket. And the people that choose to step out and use it as often as they can are the ones that are going to win. So I wanna leave you with one final thing before we open it up for some Q&A. Uh, we have about nine minutes left. The simple thing that I want people to know is that your failures will always open the doors to your successes. So don't think anything that you do that doesn't quite work out the right way is a failure. It's a lesson to learn how to do it the right way. So yes, I'm making LinkedIn sound very easy, but this is nine years of trial and tribulation. This is nine years of figuring out the best way to build my network and to message people and to close more sales. So I've put in the hours, not only how to use the platform, and I still do every single day, but now people, I'm, I speak it online and in person as a, a LinkedIn expert and trainer. I train some of the largest financial firms and their representatives in the world now because of my consistency. And each and every one of you can achieve the same thing. So Elizabeth, I just wanted to thank you again for the opportunity and I'm um, going to open it up to the room now for any questions that they have. Thanks, Scott. So can we just send Scott some fire? Here we are dropping emojis into the chat after Scott's like, don't do that on LinkedIn. Can we just show Scott some love? Yes. So Sahiya says that was amazing. And if you've got questions for Scott, go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, I did see some questions, so I'm going to just ask a couple of those. Um, and then as folks are just dropping their questions into the chat or meeting themselves, we'll have people kind of jump on. So Scott, one of the questions came in from Sahiya which was really around an old LinkedIn profile. Looks like she's transitioning into a new role, a new, mm -hmm. a new job, starting her own business. What's that transition look like? And what's your recommendation or tips on creating or uplifting or up-leveling your, your, your new profile as well as your connections on LinkedIn? Yeah, so well, number Sorry, one. Can, I, can I just add to that, Elizabeth? Thank you. Um, it's Sandhya. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I just want to nuance it a little bit. So I spent 15 years in finance. Mm -hmm. And so I'm now, um, you know, wellness entrepreneur. And you talked about ideal client and power client. First, I used to think, Scott, that I need to divorce my past. But I'm like, oh, my God, I spent so many years in corporate America. And I used to teach yoga on the side and the conference rooms and everything. And that's what I do now. So it's like there's something there. So anyways, just wanted to nuance it. Awesome. Yeah. No, and um you know, with any profile that people have, you just have to update it to what you're currently doing. You just make it fresh. You don't have to start over. Um, and the reason why I tell people not to start over is, 
again, the the leveraging of those 30,000 connections. So if you're on LinkedIn and you only have a couple hundred or a couple thousand connections, you have a long way to go to really build that ideal client network. So again, you don't have to disconnect or start from scratch. You know, just update your profile to highlight what it is that you're doing now. Change your headline, change your about section, update your experiences, give people, you know, a little up to date on what you're doing right now. But the second thing is when you're using the search engine, it's, it's based off of the connections that you have. So people in your network that you're connected to right now, they might not be your ideal client or power partner avatar, but someone within their networks may be. So if you disconnect from those people, when you're doing your searches, you're actually devaluing the search results that you could get. So you want to leave those people there and use those networks that you're currently plugged into to enable you to connect with their connections of people that are the right fit for your network. Love that. And can I just take it back off of that too? I tend to find that even when you're changing careers or you're going from finance to health and wellness is what it sounds like. Some of those previous connections can be your biggest advocates. They're yeah. celebrating you. They're loving the direction that you're changing and they can really become great referral sources for you too. So building upon what Scott has said there too. Um, opening it back up to the room. Any other questions here for Scott? We still have a couple of minutes, so let's take advantage of it. And thank you, Elizabeth, as well. You're welcome. Yes. Gina, I see you there. Do you have a question? I see you. It's good to see you. Are you talking to me? Yes. Oh, oh she's hi. Typing. No, no, oh. she's typing. I'm looking at her because she's typing, and I don't know. I can't hear her. Okay. So. Oh. I was going to say, it's like, you know, I'm kind of silly and dorky on all my TikTok and Instagram dancing like a fool and everything. So I'm afraid that like, if I go on LinkedIn and I start posting, like, they're going to look at that and search me and realize like, oh, she's kind of goofy and stuff. Like, is that bad? Like, I, everything should be super professional on LinkedIn, right? Like, if I'm true, if I'm trying to sell like social media marketing and like confidence coaching, it shouldn't be like anything where I'm my quirky self. Yeah, well, it's not about uh, not being yourself, but you have to use the platforms for the way that they're best being used. So, um, you know, Facebook is always best for like, you know, personal life. Um, Instagram is for, you know, education and entertainment. Um, TikTok is for pure entertainment and LinkedIn is for business networking, education, and information. So you can still be yourself. Uh, but the simple adage is, you know, whatever you're doing on Facebook, Instagram, and other platforms, don't post that on LinkedIn unless it fits into that category of education and information. So, you know, I'm, I do Instagram reels every single day. So I have a goofy side to myself that, that people don't even know I have on LinkedIn because typically people stay on the platforms that they want to use. So mm -hmm. you can still be yourself within the content that you create on LinkedIn, but it should be in that professional manner um, where you're still educating and informing and still be yourself on TikTok and Instagram and what you're doing on there. But just make sure that you're not downplaying yourself and your personality, but make sure it's in a professional manner. Okay, thank you. And this was an amazing thing. What is your Instagram? Uh, it's at Scott Aaron LinkedIn. Thank you. All, all one word. Can you type that? And Jensen yep. also just dropped um, some resources here in the chat as well as on um, Facebook group if you want to catch some of that as well too. Um, last question for you, and this came through um, some of the folks that said they're going to catch us on the replay. Scott, what's your advice if folks are looking to grow their own business and it's a side hustle, how should they be thinking about leveraging LinkedIn? Because um, some of their concerns is really their employers. Yeah, I, I mean, again, there, there's two different avenues for that. Um, some people have employers where um, they have a, a non-compete or some sort of uh, legal agreement that they can't use certain social media platforms to promote anything that they're doing outside of that. So that's something that you would have to talk about within if there is some sort of HR agreement in that sense. Um, if you're the, the person that you're employed by is not really on social media or on LinkedIn, I always tell people uh, you can't get fired for providing information and education or advice. And the great thing is this, 
you are not openly selling or pitching anything on LinkedIn. So there's no red flag that's going to be raised. You're just pouring in value to those that you're connected to. All of the external networking and the potential opportunity for growing your side hustle happens in a place where your employer can't see it. It's in your private messaging. That's where all the magic happens. What is going on on the outside, which is you know building your, your brand and your business, that, that's where um, you're just pouring into people. You're adding value to their lives. So remember, there's no selling and pitching. It's all education information. So if anything, your employer would appreciate you being active and, and being a, a valuable resource to the network that you're growing. But again, where all the magic happens is when you're genuinely messaging people, which leads to those offline conversations. I love that. So you can still grow your business. It's really just taking those conversations behind the scenes into the DMs. And Christina, Instagram queen said, wow, Scott, you are popular. 32,000 followers. <laughs> All right. So Scott, I know that you have an upcoming workshop that you have kicking off at the end of this month. Scott also has resources that um, Jensen here on my team is going to be dropping into the chat and comments. Can you just tell us a little bit about how folks can connect with you and what's the best way to, to stay in touch? Yeah, just if anybody wants the resource packet or information about our free three-day, uh, it's a simple content creation workshop, the 28th to the 30th of this month. Um, just email scott at scottaaron.net and I can send you all that information and uh, would love to see you there. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today and we will see you same place, same time next week. Take care now.